In this video, we are diving back into more Pico CTF 2022, capture the flag, fun training activity, fun exercise, and let's get to it. I'm gonna hop over to my computer screen here. I do have a Kali Linux terminal open inside of a Kali Linux virtual machine, but we are diving into the fourth page of the Pico CTF 2022 game. This is online at picoctf.org. And if you're watching already along this far in the video series, you probably already know what this is all about. But hey, we're looking at a new binary exploitation category challenge. This game is, this challenge is called RPS. Click on it here, it says, here's a program that plays rock, paper, scissors against you. I hear something good happens if you win five times in a row. You can connect to the program with Netcat, and it says the program source code with the flag redacted can be downloaded here, and that command does let us access the remote socket service to actually experiment with the real thing. Let's go ahead and download the source code though, and let's move into the binary exploitation category. Let's create a directory called RPS for the name of the challenge and W get this file down. And with that, we can check out what this thing is. It is a C source code file. Looks like we can examine it. It's gonna end up including a handful of built-in library, standard library stuff for C. And we define a weight constant of 60. I'm assuming that's gonna be 60 seconds, maybe. Uh, we have a constant character flag that is going to be a string or a C style string. It's redacted for the moment, right? Because we need to retrieve the real flag. And we have a hands and loses array set up with character strings of rock, paper, scissors, and paper, scissors, rock. Oh, this must be what loses against what hand. You also have an integer variable for wins. And we have T get input. Uh, Another input retrieval function that we had seen previously, looks like they kind of set this all up as they had in the uh, rend different renditions of binary challenges. Uh, we have a ready for reading check, which is that select stream we've seen previously. And we have a ready for reading uh, addition to be able to get data. We end up timing out if it's more than 60 seconds, right? After the wait period. But ultimately the more interesting functions here that aren't the boilerplate we've seen before are this play function. This returns a Boolean value and we have a player turn out of a hundred, goodness. It looks like it's seeding a random number generator. That's what that srand function does. Uh, and it seeds it based off of time Time is a function that will return a given a specific modifier. Uh, but seeding this just like this, I think, keeps a static value, does it not? Or, or it just returns the current time, which is still not a good thing to seed a random number generator off of because it could be caught up and, and catched with it, right? So, meh, odd. Let's keep cruising, maybe that is a vulnerability we'll have to play with. Otherwise, it just prints out, hey, make your selection, get the player's turn, determine if there's a timeout or not. On the computer's turn, based off of a random number generated from a pseudo random number generator that was seated above, it'll tell you, you played this thing, when the computer played that thing. And all it checks is str, str, determining the player turn against the losses or loses computer turn in case the indexes match up. And the str str is going to end up probably making the singular check as to whether or not you win or you lost. And that's how you play. I'm curious what the str str function is going to end up doing, and we can go go do some Googling and research on that. But the main function, of course, is going to end up staging all of this to actually run. It says, welcome to the challenger. Anyone that beats me five times in a row, I'll give up a flag. And you have a menu to be able to do this. That's about it. Okay. So I think the gimmick here is going to fall to this str str function. Let me do some quick Googling. I'll look for an str str function in C. Uh, is there a man page that tells me a little bit about this? Linux hint? No, I want a man page, please. Man, there it is. Okay. Find a substring. Wait a second, what? If you find a string inside of a string, what does it return? 
it returns a character array. So upon successful completion, string string, str, 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 shall return a pointer to the located string or a null pointer if the string is not found. If s2 points to a string with zero length, the function shall return s1. s2 is the second argument. s1 is the first argument. No errors are defined, but all it's doing is checking for a substring. So the player's turn is what you play. And you make a selection and you enter a literal string. So if we're just checking if our player's turn is in the losing words, like paper, scissors, or rock, uh, if it returns anything, yeah, if it's not null, it tells you you win. So could you enter an empty string? Is that going to be, or, or is there a, there's not a letter that is in all of these words. E, like pa paper is the problem here. Scissors and rock, you have a lot of options, but paper, you totally don't. Oh no, you have R. R is a letter, a substring, right? That isn't present in all of these. So you could still win by just saying, hey, my move is the letter R. <laughs> Maybe that could do it. Let's try it. Let's connect to this thing. I'll grab the netcat command. Are you ready to play a game? Yeah, let's play a game. Please make your selection. Rock, paper, scissors. I'll enter rock. It says, hey, you played rock. The, comp the computer played rock. Seems like you didn't win. Uh, okay. But I can enter literally anything. I can enter a good old, a good old please subscribe, right? It says, you played that. Your computer played rock. Looks like you didn't win. Let's play and try to enter something like O. It says you played O, the computer played rock. Rock would only lose to paper and paper does not have O in the, in the word. So that was a good example of us losing based off of our kind of logic that we could win. So let's try O again. Computer played paper, which would lose against scissors, and O is in it. So did I, am I wrong? Please make your selection R. Computer played paper, seems like you didn't win this time. Play again. Uh, okay, so I must be, I must be making some mistake in that idea. If you played nothing, the computer played rock, seems like you didn't win this time. The way that they check that is if str, str, returns anything, right? Because the only else condition is if it were to be null. But you want a character pointer to the located string or a null pointer if the string is not found. If S2 points to a string with zero length, the function shall return S1. Locate the first occurrence of the string pointed to by S1, which we pass as simple letter O, right? Or letter R, in the sequence of bytes excluding the terminating null character in the string pointed to by S2. Is there ever a capability to win? Why? Because we never saw us win. Let's play rock. Let's play rock. You win, because rock does beat scissors. And if the player turn loses against, if rock and rock is equal to that. Oh. So is it gonna be something it, it is going to be a full string every time. Yeah. 
why am I overthinking this? Should I just do the whole pseudo random number generator thing and try and keep pace with it? Because that could work. Like that, that could work. But the substring of S1 being literally the letter R, if it's in this, it should return it. If it's just the substring, is it not? Or no, 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 no. It's the other way around. We're getting the substring of it in it, which is first occurrence in the string pointed to by S1 of the sequence exclude. Oh, well, that just means we reverse. So, sorry, I was thinking of it backwards. It's checking if our losses or our lose condition is in the player turn. So while I was trying to minimize it down to a value of R or like a single thing that could be present in all of them, I, I thought about it the wrong way. If we were to try and give it all of the potential victors, you'll always win. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's silly and fun and stupid. <laughs> <laughs> you just told it, hey, hey, whether in, whatever you played, it'll still be something that we beat. Because if whatever loses to something else can still be in our input. And that is the gimmick. It's a substring. The computer played scissors. Scissors would lose to rock. Rock is something that we did play. We just played all of the possible moves. <laughs> I like that a lot. That's that's cheesy and stupid, but a good a good gimmick. So hey, how could we write a stupid simple um I guess get flag script for that? If we echo new lines, do they get displayed? They do. Okay, so let's use echo rock paper scissors and then a new line, and then enter that five times in a row. One, two, three, four, five. And there's our flag spat out. Um, and then we could enter two to exit, right? Yeah. So let's have all that output on the screen, and let's grep out our flag in that output. Now that we've kind of understood the gimmick here. Neato. That's pretty slick. Let's save that. Hello? <laughs> save. Uh, you know what? Save, please. Is, is it is it getting put in the get flag script? It is. Why is it not wanting to do that? I mean, that is the solution. I guess it's just not wanting to run it while it's inside of a bash script did something weird happen there whatever let's just echo out that flag and redirect it to our flag.txt file and call it a day because we solved that challenge fair and square by cheating and playing literally every single rock paper scissors move at the same time <laughs> Cool. That's a good challenge, guys. Hey, kudos to you, Pico CTF. That, I, I like that one. It was silly. It was stupid. It was good. I hope you enjoyed it, everybody, listening in, having some fun with us. Uh, I hope that was kind of a neat gimmick and just, hey, kind of thinking critically about the functions in use there that determine the win condition. Like, did we in fact beat them when we were determining what might be used uh, as the Okay, potential loser of a rock, paper, scissors scenario. We could have probably beat some stuff up with the whole pseudo random number generator being seated with a very weak secure connection, uh, with a very weak time seed, time based seed. Uh, that would have been a whole other can of worms, though. It was fun digging into that str, str substring functionality. I hope you thought so too. So, yeah. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do the YouTube. Please do those YouTube algorithm things, like the video, comment, subscribe, anything that can help this channel, this video, keep growing, get in front of more folks, get more education, get more free learning out to everybody. Thanks so much, all. Love you. See you later.